Hello there, everyone. Thank you for joining me here. Today is the start of a new campaign. One that I would call Socialism and Communism with British characteristics. So, as the title states, and if you watched my last episode, we are starting today a new campaign with the British. Now, right now, it's called the United Kingdom. Soon enough, it will not be a United Kingdom, but all good things come in time. So let's get started and let's go over a couple rules here first. So, I played through this a little bit, but I need some custom game rules. A lot of this is really cool stuff they added in Waking the Tiger... No, not Waking the Tiger DLC. Man the Guns DLC, which came out literally a month ago. 31 days ago since the time of this recording. That being said, uh, I'm going to leave a lot of this stuff just the same. There's no point to really change it. Uh, coups, I mean, the AI doesn't even use coups. You know, even if they did, they'd screw it up. Gameplays. Pair droppers? Actually, countries may execute parachute drops freely. I think the AI might use pair droppers. Could be wrong, but I think they might actually use it from here on out. Uh, maximum fort level. Oh, you can actually do that. That's cool. Anyways, so, I played around with this, and I'm thinking, we're gonna go ahistorically, obviously, since we're going communist. But, since I was a democratic nation, or will be a former democratic nation, I need to make sure that France has some sort of potential ally, maybe another democratic nation within Europe that's somewhat strong, or a confederation of states that could be strong to oppose us, someone else, you never know. Anyways, so I've, um, of course, I'm playing as the UK, which is called Britain, whatever. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to make... Obviously, this is a historical. I'm going to make a couple countries have to go down a path. So I want to make sure that we still have fascists in the game. So the Union will be the same. Japan, uh, since it's a historical, they might not stay fascist. Really nationalist, if, of all things. But uh, Italy will stay the same. France will go democratic alternative, an alternative democratic France. Uh, Poland will stay the same. Australia. What I did last time when I tried this, and it worked somewhat well. Let's see, we'll have Romania go democratic so that there'll be a pocket of democracy of all things. Oh my gosh, that sounds terrible in, in the Balkans. That makes no sense. Regardless, especially if you know what's going on in Serbia nowadays. But anyways, enough of the modern political commentary. I want the Yugoslavians to go democratic as well as the Czechs. This way they might form some sort of democratic, democratic Balkan alliance between these three nations to maybe offset the German AI, maybe the Soviet AI, maybe my AI, or even the French AI, or Italian AI. Regardless, we are playing it historically, and pretty much everything else will be remaining the same. I'm not going to do any of this stuff because part of the decolonization progress within the focus tree for the UK is actually set up very, very well, so we're just going to keep that. Uh, I just have to back out, and then let's just go ahead. Of course, we're playing on regular difficulty, and let's begin with our nation. Now, I only played this using the focuses. I didn't change anything around with the nations. So, really, between this episode and the next, I will fix the naval aspects of our country. Because doing this right now uh, will cause a lot of time to be used up that I want to kind of save for the opening few episodes. I mean, opening few episodes will take some time. Oh, we actually had a lot of this research. Nice. So, I'm just going to save it between this episode and the next because it's going to be some time before we actually get into war. Uh, let's see. Oh, we could use better tanks. Since we are playing the UK, the greatest challenge in playing the United Kingdom is just the manpower. The last time I played the UK, I went with Mass Assault, which was not easy as the UK, especially in Führerreich, which was the last time I actually played it. You get a ton of manpower. I love, 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 love the manpower aspect of this. But, oh wait, where was, um, was there manpower in this? Leg infantry, supply consumption, organization. Uh, I, I don't see any, there's no manpower in the battle. Mass mobilization does. It's got 5% from human wave offensives. I really thought you got more manpower from this. Huh. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, I thought you would get at least a little bit. 
But regardless. Okay, anyways. Uh, let's. Uh, I don't really like Grand Battle Plan. If anything, we could go Mobile Warfare. Because that's probably, in my opinion, the second best doctrine. And then we would get down to Desperate Defense from Modern Blitzkrieg. Because these benefits. Infantry organization, tank organization, backhand blow is okay. And tanks already have enough breakthrough anyways. We actually, yeah. <laughs> well, you can eventually use people who are on fire. And to get people who are in wheelchairs to fire a rocket propelled grenade. I love that idea because that's nothing more British than disabled people in wheelchairs firing grenades. Uh, it's going to take some serious time to research all this. We'll lose really nothing. Yeah. I, and I, we will want to use tanks quite a bit since we have very limited manpower. Yeah. I think, for the best. I think that really is for the best. Okay, anyways. Uh, focus. I love the civilian factory things, but we want to go communist as fast as possible. And the caveat to becoming communist is that you have to decolonize. This is the greatest thing that I hated about this tree, but I've kind of grown to like a little bit. Because communism preaches equality, right? So why would you not have all your colonial subjects be equal to you? So if you don't decolonize after becoming communist within two years there will be a civil war we don't want to start that but we're going to go over here and start a change in course so we get a little more political power and weekly war support as well as more uh different ideological support god there's a lot of talking in these couple episodes so really we want to start off we won't have a ton of places to build factories dockyards that type of stuff however we will build in the Midlands, some civilian factories would get a bigger industrial base. Oh man. Oh god, I remember playing the UK. Oh no. Uh, um, I do have plans though who I'm going to invade first eventually. Uh, let's see, 70, 80, 90. Uh, do that since you're the closest there. That'd be good. Factories. Well, we're going to really focus on tanks. But we got to make sure we got enough guns and artillery. And, oh god, planes. Oh no, not the ship stuff. Oh god, I hate this. Ah, oh, man, the guns really screwed up the, the ship meta and all oh, the different types of ships you can make. Oh, that's terrible. Anyways, um, let's see, support equipment. We will definitely need more since we'll be making a lot of smaller divisions, probably 20 width divisions max, besides the tanks. Oh, these are all just. Oh, god dang it. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, there's so much. Uh, let's see, we got interwar fighters. We. We have interwar fighters, interwar bombers, but we don't have carrier naval bombers nor carrier these guys. Huh. Uh, go ahead and make those two. Max out guns. We'll need more quarter pounders, and we'll need some of this as well. All right, so what do we need for dockyards? Well, I'm going to reorganize the Navy later, but we have five carriers, 12 battleships, three battle cruisers, 16 heavy cruisers, 31 light cruisers, 128 destroyers, which will become very, very valuable, and 42 subs. So, I guess I'll just tell you who I'm going to invade first. So, through the focus tree, we will be able to justify on other people and take them out, hopefully without any sort of interference, because if you play regularly with historical focuses and f historical countries on, with historical countries on, Usually the UK would guarantee certain nations, but since I'm going communist, hopefully France doesn't do that. So I can hopefully invade places like Ireland. And you'll see why I need to invade Ireland in the next couple episodes. Uh, that being said, we all want more battleships, carriers, light cruisers, pretty much everything but b battle cruisers and heavy cruisers. So, uh, we got a ton of these ships here. Early subs holes. Do we have anything better than early ship, early sub holes? S class, OPR class. Oh god, no. <laughs> no. Subs are easy to make. I'm not really worried about them. We're making a bunch of these. Uh just just make whatever you can as fast as possible. And like I said, I'll divvy all these guys up when we get to wherever. But before we actually do that, I'm gonna make sure that all these ships come to a certain place. So I want all ships that are not subs, all non submarine ships to come to the Greater London area. This is a submarine, and they will go to Sussex. Sussex destroyers come to Greater London area. Greater London area. Oh my gosh. Just so that this type of organization will be a little better. Like how I did um, the end, or middle to the end of my USA play through. 
So now all, pretty much all your ships are in one place. This, will, of course, costs a bunch of fuel, but that is totally okay. We're done with that, thank God. And we got lots of divisions, but let's see. Motorized division, not bad. Infantry division is 18 width, which will make 7-2 divisions, hopefully. You know, 7 infantry battalions, 2 artillery battalions, pretty standard. We could use, actually, 10 infantry battalions instead. Or, is that... No, total of 10, because right now we have 9. Uh, just go ahead and train these guys. Oh, wait, colonial... Oh, actually, that's not bad, too. I'm going to need some colonial troops here as well. They call them colonial troops, but really, I'm going to need some guys to guard the coast. Do that, do that. I'm about to sneeze. Oh, boy. Go ahead and do this. We won't need to guard the uh, colonies because we soon won't have any colonies. Send the cavalry towards the tank because that's supposed to be mobile. Uh, Gibraltar Defense Force, do that. And we're left with these guys. Cool, all right. And actually, I want you to become tank brigades, but right now that's okay. Uh, you guys, uh, let's get the time going, first of all, so that we, you know, get through the first couple of years. Coast, definitely not. Victory points. I'm already going to go ahead and tell these guys that, yeah, you will be needed elsewhere. That'll be good. That, oh, that already cost 16 divisions to do that. Gibraltar. If you know what's going to happen, I'm not going to guard pretty much anything here. There's really no point to. And you'll, you'll definitely see why. Actually, I didn't realize that the UK actually does own Ceylon. So it's actually pretty cool. God, look at all these guys. They're so weak. Holy cow. It's not because of manpower. It's because of equipment. Holy crap. Anyways, let's send you guys over here. And you will be what I always call the... Coast Guards, because you never know when the AI might just try to uh, invade you. And usually it doesn't happen, but uh, I'm going to forego this. Demand reduced Dutch trade with Germany. That's just going to eat up political power that we don't have, that we will need, definitely. Uh, nation building the Raj. We will we'll definitely do some building. Definitely some building. Let's speed on through this. Planes. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh and... King George V dies. His Majesty, His Majesty King George V, King of the UK and the British Dominions and Emperor of India, has passed away. His quite calm, his quiet calm and devotion to his subjects saw the empire through both the Great War and the Great Depression. His son, his son, will assume the mantle as King Edward VIII, but there are already concerns that he will be too independent of thought. Stanley Baldwin and Neville Chamberlain have, are preparing to ensure that he will accept direction. From the Prime Minister and the Cabinet. Oh, good. We get less weekly st stability. Oh, starting off great. So great. And since we have a bunch of ships here, and we have some, some fuel, I don't mind sending a group out. Wait, you can be refitted? Wait, this is an early cruiser. You are a early heavy cruiser. Early cruiser? What, what the hell is the difference? Wow, this is a lot more cost. Uh, let's see, we get, uh, if I can upgrade you now, I will go ahead and do that since we have, we have time in the beginning of this game. Uh, this would become a light cruiser, basically, so that's not worth it. Uh, anyone else carriers? Where's, ooh, carrier group. Hello. Train. It will cost some fuel. I want to get as much naval XP as possible. I want to combine all these groups together. Select all. Do that. It'll just make it easier for us. Go ahead and train. All of you. Okay, maybe not all of you. Oh, no. Oh, changing course. Very good. Uh, do that. And all of you convert to this, which will give you better torpedo attack. Actually, that's pretty good. A changing course. So, with this focus tree, you can't really do very much until you become much more communist through decisions, which is under the concessions to the trade union's tree. So you get 10 more stability, 10% more, and yeah, not bad. Let's go ahead and do that. And we only have 71 factories, oh no, 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 no. Oh god, let's see. This will be the mobile battalion, the mobile strike force. Oh, Neil Ritchie is politically connected, so he's not my first choice. So is Oliver Lees, he's also politically connected. Uh, William Gotts would be okay. Promotion cost would be okay. Brian Horrocks. 
Uh, let's see, you have, this guy has better supply, this guy's guy worse planning and max planning, this guy's better defense and better attack, so William Gott has the job. And this will be our regular infantry soldiers. Um, good for attack, Miles Dempsey, awesome. Oh, maybe, maybe all this grinding upper XP might not be a good idea. Um, converted battleship hull. What if I told you guys to stop for now? Because we definitely don't want to lose too much oil. I don't mind trading away maybe one of my factories for more oil. And we want to support someone who supports us, kind of. Oh yeah, we'll definitely do British Malayo. You know why? Because they're not always going to be our puppet. I forgot I have coffee here. Thanks for reminding me, guys. Hmm. Oh, also, also, if you haven't noticed... This, since the last campaign we played through, we went through two small patches, hotfixes and whatnot. And it changed the game, especially the beginning of the game. So civilian factory, or civilian economy now, reduces the amount of fuel you gain per oil and your total fuel capacity, which really, really sucks. So we really need to become communists as soon as we can. And like I said a little bit earlier, I was alluding to, to become communist is more emphasized in the British tree through trade unions. Even though you can support trade unions, but you don't have to become communists. And just because you want to become communist doesn't mean you necessarily have to use trade unions, even though that might be a very wise thing to do. So, uh, let's see. Because I guess, theoretically, we all know communism doesn't work, but theoretically, communism uh, can be anarcho-communism. It could be, uh, what else is there? I remember narco-communism the best. Uh, what was it? Leninist, Stalinist communism. Or maybe Leninist communism versus Stalinist communism versus Maoist communism. So there's different types of communism out there that are all theoretical, we'll say. Alright, let's see. Czechoslovakia, we already assigned... Oh, that's Hungary. Is already democratic. Uh, Ethiopia lost. Kingdom of Romania, we want them to go... Democratic. We want Yugoslavia to become democratic, so they're 15% of the way there. France will go and stay democratic, but they'll probably end up becoming much more communist. So here's the thing. So now we got demand or concessions to the trade unions. Very cool. And what we need to do with the fate of the royal family as well as eliminate the upper class. But you can only do that when your ruling party is communist. So with that in mind... We will either go with revisit colonial policy, so we'll get more communist support, less stability, but more political power, which will come in handy. Or I get two civilian, fa four civilian factories right now, which actually I'm going to do because that sounds a little better. Because ultimately, what you want to do is get to that extra research slot. Even though we're trying to become communist, research is still key. That's pretty much one of the only few ways we can get a leg up upon our potential enemies because. Let's just be real here. Ooh, this is not going. It's not going to be easy playing as a UK or what might become the former UK. But right now, I'm going to get a silent workhorse just because, even though the ruling party has to be democratic, we got enough cost, and we're going to need a lot of political power. I mean, a ton of political power because. Hold on. Uh, oh, second London naval tr conference is going to happen. I don't give a shit. Um, this concessions to the trade unions. These all cost political power, and it'll hurt to you, kind of, but not really hurt you to a degree. So basically, you have to hold, have to hold the referendum to become fully communist, ruled by communist party, but that requires all these X's that you see on screen right now, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different events that need to happen before you can become fully communist, but some of these benefits are okay. For example, the first one is you have to pass factory safety legislation, so you lose some factory dockyard output, but it does decrease the cost of all requests trade union support decisions by 10. So when you pass this top one here, you get these costs lowered by 10, but that being said, when you do take one of these, the cost of all the rest of them increase by 10 as well. So it's an interesting mechanic that Paradox I wouldn't think of doing. Paradox is an interesting company, developer, whoever, I don't know, factory output, doctorate output, max factories in a state, or we get more output, less factory bomb vulnerability, conversion speed bonus, as well as production efficiency, retention, and base. Uh, since we won't have a ton of factories to work with, 
I think just having the output is probably best. So that it really won't convert anything. Factory bomb vulnerability is okay. Production efficiency, retention and base are okay. So let's do that. Cool. So right now we get 1.72 political power a day, which will obviously go down as we lose stability and become gradually and gradually more communist. Ah, Edward VIII. Thank you for making our country less stable by the week. Who knew that a British man marrying a uh, an American woman who was already married before would destabilize your country? It almost sounds like that could be applied to our uh, modern day knowledge. Hmm. Go ahead and repair. Let's see. Not bad. Oh, we only have two out of five. Da, da, da. Oh, these guys are currently trying to repair. If we're going to actually build a ship. Oh my gosh, look at all this stuff. Eh, we got some good naval experience at least right now. We want more carriers. Carriers will be great as well as early heavy ship hulls. Wait, what's the difference? So you were constructed from that. Uh, let's see. Carriers. I want carriers, man. Integrated, integrated hangar. Hmm. Oh, I'm not going to have enough XP for this, am I? Let's see, deck space, not bad. Deck armor. Oh, that'll help your HP, lower your speed, but give you a little bit of armor, that's okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to do this until uh, we get a little bit more naval XP, so. So, really, this is kind of a waiting game, in all honesty. So, now we have enough political power to pass through a lot of these reforms, but since we still have Stanley Baldwin, I might wait, actually, just a little bit, because I want to get out of civilian e economy... So we get more f fuel, so I can train more ships, so we can get faster naval doctrines, and better equipment and armaments for our ships. And help lower our consumer goods factories percentage. Even though I really, really want this stuff. Because right now this could give you more weekly war support, which we only have 19%, which isn't good, but it, it will help if it's higher. Uh, construction, actually, this one's actually extremely good to do, because you get 15% a construction speed bonus. And more stability, but it does raise the cost of everything else. Uh, uh, ultimately, I think going down to early mobilization is probably the best. German dominates Dutch trade negotiations. Yeah, like I said, I don't really care. Cool. Alright, let's see. So it's June 1936. We want the best tanks in the world. Resource efficiency gain. Currently, we have... We're pretty good. We're pretty good on everything. We could maybe extract a little bit more oil... But right now we're doing okay. We're doing definitely okay. Um, let's make sure we're producing, you know, modern tanks. Oh, not modern tanks, but contemporary tanks. Oh, ah, oh, Edward VIII abdication in crisis. So for some time, the King Edward VIII has entertained hopes to marry the American Wallace Simpson. A constitutional crisis has now arisen as Miss Simpson is not only divorced from her previous husband, but in point of fact, still married to her current husband. Oh my gosh, she is a hoe. Presently pursuing a second divorce. A second... A second divorce. She is a, like a double hoe. General outrage has ensued on the grounds that as king and being the head of the Church of England, Edward cannot marry a divorcee. The king, however, has made it abundantly clear that he is very much in love with Miss Simpson and intends to marry her regardless of the opinions of his government or his subjects. As such, only three options remain open to him. The British government and the governments of the Dominions may have already stated that any alternative to abdication would be unacceptable, and repercussions of trying to force through a marriage, even an attempted compromise, would likely be dire, not only for Britain itself, but also for its ties to the Commonwealth. As the King's closest advisors continue their attempts to convince him, the public awaits with bated breath the resolution of this conflict between King and his cabinet. Well. We get more stability. Thank you, Edward. I love stability. I love the Republic. Even though... The government of... UK. Is it a Republic? It's a... I don't know. It's not really... I guess you could say it's a monarchy, but it's not really ruled by a parliament. And he abdicated. So, Prime Minister Baldwin has made it quite clear that the dignity of the King Emperor will be impinged if he were to marry not just a commoner, a filthy commoner, but also a divorcee and an American. And if that was not bad enough... Oh, it does say an American right there. Yeah, American. Oh, filthy. Absolutely terrible. After much soul-searching, His Majesty has chosen love over duty. Oh, God. And has chosen to abdicate. Oh, yeah. Gotta do what my feelings say. His younger brother, Albert, will assume the mantle as King George VI. 
London bookmakers are already taking odds on whether this shy man will make it to his own coronation. Oh boy. God save King George VI. So thanks for abdicating, Edward. We now get a lot of stability. So yeah, I definitely want more fuel so we can train more guys first. Uh, we get 1.79 political power a day. Not bad, not bad. Alright, very cool. Limited rearmament. Awesome. So we get four more civilian factories. Uh, the shadow scheme is really good, so you get more four more military factories when you go to war. But you won't use them until you actually go to war. So let's go ahead and revisit the colonial policy because this is not ready yet. Revisit colonial policy. 70 days, we get more communist support and more political power. Ultimately, and the Spanish Civil War has spawned, but we cannot help anybody here because we are still democratic. Supposedly democratic. Mobile warfare, awesome. We actually finished that up nicely. Oh, yeah, I need to do something else. Oh, 358 freaking days? Jesus Christ. But you get, really have to get land doctrines done as fast as possible so that you'll remain competitive. Even though we only have one army XP from grinding out these guys. Uh, how are these guys doing? Uh, I don't want to grind you guys out yet just because you're out of guns. You don't really make that many a day. All right, let's go ahead and modify our government. Actually, can we get another political person here? Like, more political power? 5% isn't worth it. Um, yeah, there's a lot of characters here, which I love. Especially George Orwell. He's really cool. Well, at least from his book. What's, yeah, I wrote at least one book. I think he also wrote Animal Farm. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, oh, wait, we can't do this. Oh, we need, we need 150 political power, which is fine, because I want actually as much fuel as possible. Oh, crap. Free dockyards, free dockyards. What do we want to build? Well, we have 24 of this. Let's see if we can actually do that. Uh, do that. Oh, wait. Do this instead. 10. Ooh, that's that's kind of costly already. Five. Oh, my gosh. This is so costly. Oh, good. Nothing there. Three. Well, we don't need that yet. They can... Let me build this. 20... And then extra hangar space will cost five. Oh, we are so close. Ah, oh, we are so close to building that. God dang it. Um, well, we will need a lot of convoys, and we can always take stuff off convoys that are being built. So I'm not really going to build my navy too much at the moment. Ah, oh, that doesn't feel good. Uh, that really doesn't feel good, but whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and get to early mobilization. You, we can use more consumer goods factories. And we'll definitely get a lot more oil, and we get normal fuel capacity, and a reduced penalty to building factories. I think, ultimately, that's probably one of the best things that we can do. Alright, so now we can maybe, perhaps, train our ships, train a few more ships, actually. Who's actually training here? You're all training? Good. You all, everyone can split off. I don't want stuff like that to happen. What are you doing? You are repairing. And now you're all training. We're still good up here. Mechanical computing, awesome. Research speed is going very well. Still 1936. Let's go back over here and get better guns. Guns are important. Oh, I definitely can't train everyone here. So let's train you guys. That'd be good. Do that. You guys will already go ahead and do that. And we have greatly reduced our stockpile of oil. Oh, that's 42. Oh, Jesus. That's too, that's too much yet. Just go home. Go home, or, yeah, something. Go home. Repair now, go home, just kind of hang out. Alright, so this is better. This is going a little better. Uh, okay, so a little entente. Seeking to form a united front against common enemies, France has reached out to Czechoslovakia with an offer of forming a little entente to unite against common enemies, thereby foregoing their bonds with Britain from the Great War. While offered a place in the defensive pact, the British Prime Minister, us, made it clear that we do not consider the alliance beneficial to the protection of European liberty. And France has nevertheless established diplomatic ties with other nations that might feel threatened and are encouraging unity for the sake of keeping the diplomatic balance in Europe. As well as preventing future conflict. Only time will tell if they can be or they can't succeed. Don't come crying to us later then, because we're going to do a lot of good stuff for ourselves. Yeah, good stuff. So, the French have formed the French Entente Alliance with themselves. And the U.S. passes the Neutrality Act. Okay, cool. With tensions rising around the globe, the U.S. Congress has been the scene of intense discussions about the role of the U.S. or what it should play on the world stage. Uh, FDR said, nah, he might be sp secretly planning to intervene in, in a European or Asian war, but he's like, sure, no war for now. 
Look at the allies. Not too bad. Not too bad. So, we have done early mobilization, which is good. Now we will definitely focus very closely on passing factory safety legislation. Oh, Olympics. I love the Olympics. And we have some sort of event going on right now. Withdraw from naval treaties. Is there some sort of event? Oh! Oh, no, no, no. Oh, so this is a penalty here. So, trade unions demand factory safety legislation. If not selected, increases the cost of all requests trade union support decisions by 10. Get less stability as well as less political power. So, we got a, we barely have enough political power to do it now. But right now, we will become a little bit more communist. We'll lose factory output and dockyard output for a year. And lower the decisions of all these other ones by 10. And that will definitely help our referendum by completing the first out of 8... Decisions for trade unions. We get another 200 days before we have to do anything else. Very cool. Ah, oh, coffee's pretty good, don't you think? Hmm. So yeah, playing as communist Britain will take some time. It will definitely take some time. That uh, we might not get into a war for actually quite a while. Since we did or visit colonial policy, we still can't do this stuff over here. So we could guide the colonies. In which they will slowly become, or the dominions, colonies, whatever, slowly become more and more independent. I, I will lose them. But we don't have to do that immediately. I want to get to this extra research slot, so let's go with the shadow scheme next. Followed up by, uh, let's see, weekly war support sounds pretty good. We could use more military factories. Tr point to trade minion, tra trade, trade union minister. Uh, we currently are... What? 21% there. We only need 50, like 51% to become communist. I really want an extra factory. Factory output fact. Oh, oh no, we want construction. We want, yeah, we definitely want construction stuff. Let's do that. That's, I, in, my, in my opinion, is worth it. So we're going to revisit our colonial policy, recognizing the rights for all peoples for self-determination. So we have basically said, uh, everyone has the right to self-determine themselves except for the Welsh and the Scottish and the Northern Irish for now. In response to concerns that this would greatly weaken the UK's position in the world, he said that all nations that desire to do so will be welcome to remain as a member of a newly founded community of nations, but then as fully equal and independent parties. Most people won't accept that. So, so we got weakened factory and dockyard output, but we do get better right now for a couple months. Faster civilian construction speed, which actually will be very good for us. Uh, let's see. Could build. I wish we could build some of this. Hmm. Civilian factories, military factories. How many military factories do we need? We need a lot of guns. We need a crap ton of guns. So, so when one of those things are done, I'm gonna go ahead and build some there. So some military factories. Ooh, better output. Love it. It's still 1936. And the last thing we shall do is. Uh, uh, oh, naval stuff. Oh, crap. Yeah. Oh, no. I need battleships. I have to have battleships. So, we'll do that. Oh, righty. Guys, and... Okay, so you're mostly all guys, except for the few grannies that are watching. Um, I checked my demographics. I'll tell you more about that later. Anyways, this has been the first episode of us playing as Communist Britain, or attempting to become Communist Britain, in an ahistorical World War II setting. With that in mind, I hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. Leave a like if you did, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you tomorrow as we continue to explore increased trade union activity and support. Thanks for watching, guys.